Hello, everyone. This is Nareed from beautiful Budapest. And today I'm speaking once again with Gabor Harsani. I say once again because this is the third uh, video, Law of Attraction video in the series of Law of Attraction. So uh, today, uh, well, first of all, hi, Gabor. I haven't seen you for a long time. <laughs> hi, hi. I'm, a, I'm, I'm speaking from Budapest. And my background is representative of that. Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> Um, today, on the topic of law of attraction, we're going to incorporate the topic of free will that has a lot to do with how we manifest. The wonderful question came in, and I will read it to you now. It says, I loved learning that we have free will to choose the life that we want. Based on this, I applied what I have learned about law of attraction. This is uh, before she met you. Um, I have applied what I learned about law of attraction to have a better husband. Long mm. story short, my husband, who was so bad for me, left. And soon later, I fell in love with a wonderful man and got married. However, after six months into the marriage, I find that my hus my new husband is almost as bad as the first. Oh dear. Where do where did I go wrong in my manifestation? Okay, well, I certainly hope the next husband will be a better one. <laughs> <laughs> well, <clears throat> Basically, we, in our mind, we have programmed patterns, uh, templates, uh, narratives, uh, rhetorics that are patterns that are stuck there. And that represents the basis of our law of attraction or manifestation or basis of our life. So, um, the, um, you know, if you, if you let's say, uh, change a a negative thought or some kind of a pattern thought into a uh, into another available thought. Uh, let's say let's say here's the mind, and then you say, "Oh, I don't like this thought. I'd rather have this thought." So, if if that's the kind of manifestation that you have used, uh, then then usually the problem is that the thought have been changed, but the context hasn't been changed. Those program patterns that are, are, are in the mind that has to be addressed, that has to be, that has to be changed. Not the thought, if you just change the thought, but not the underlying program pattern, then we're gonna repeat, we're gonna keep repeating in our life. Tomorrow will be the same, basically the same as today. And so it's, uh, it, it's, it's very much like uh, if you have a garden and, and, and there's weeds and you just, cut, you just cut the weed, but you leave the uh, root in, in the earth, mm -hmm. then it's going to regrow. So the, the root has to be yanked out, changed, uh, whatever word we use, right? And then the manifestation will be permanent. Mm -hmm. If not, the so-called manifestation, usually with a lot of effort, it can become true, but it's going to be temporary. Hence, you got the same husband as before. <laughs> yeah. And now she mentioned free will. I know that you speak about free will very differently. <laughs> Perhaps if you elaborate on, on free will as you see it, this might help clarify uh, more what you just said. Well, uh, again, when, when, when our mind is programmed and our life and everything is programmed as a result of it, right? Uh, basically all our freed will or our will, choices, etc., have been all encumbered. Mm -hmm. It's like if you have a house and it's, uh, you have a lien against it and it's mortgaged to the hilt, uh, there's no room left there. It's all encumbered, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, 
when when uh, when the freed will is totally encumbered, grabbed, used by the patterns, by the programming, right? Then there is no free. There's no free will. All the free will that we should have, would have, is taken. It's like you, you know, your house is mortgaged through hilt. You can't go to the bank and ask for more money. It's all, it's all gone. Mm-hmm. There's no room left, right? Very similar. So, um, in in order now, this is a this subject is very controversial. Many people say this. Many people say that. Some people say there is no there's no free will. It's absolutely true. If we consider the current circumstances, uh, the, the way it is, there is no free will. Absolutely, it's all encumbered and goodbye. That's it. You know. So, in order to have a, a, a free will, I call it freed will. Then something something has to happen to that uh, to that to that free will that you have given over to the patterns. Something we have to take it out of there somehow. So I have to, if I have all these all these patterns, somehow the the um, uh, my will has to be taken out of there. That happens to ho- help holding it together, right? Yeah. So the the encumbered will has to be freed up. Okay. Then the question is, how do we free it up, right? Just by wishing that it's freed up or understanding that it has to be freed up will not work right. at all. It doesn't matter what thought you have about it. It's not going to do anything. The way it is, is the way it is. So the, the only thing in my experience that uh, gets you to the free will is a shock. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, a shock can get us out of that, out of the pattern zone and get us into the temporary, mind you, into a zone where the uh, patterns are no longer relevant, right? And we get this, we get, we get a 10, 20 seconds uh, uh, of, of uh, the shock creates this 20 second of free will where you're no longer encumbered, you're out of the zone of the programming. Mm-hmm. Now, we have we have several choices of shock. We can let the universe shock us, which is what most people choose or not choose. Life is just happening and if there is a shock, you know, all of a sudden the mind stops and the programming is no longer relevant for maybe uh, 10 seconds, 20 seconds. Uh, many, many people I know uh, had car accidents in which they report a, an amazing phenomenon of, oh my God, I never felt so much uh, peace. Uh, my daughter was driving at uh, a Highway 401 in, in Toronto in the winter, three o'clock in the morning, and she slipped on some ice or something, and the car started to spin. Luckily, there was no other cars around. So she hit the rail, and uh, she was like in total shock, of course. But, and her shock lasted like at least five minutes, maybe 10 minutes. And she reported that it was an amazing feeling of peace. Mm-hmm. No thought, nothing. So shock works. It gets us into uh, the zone where the pattern, the programming is no longer relevant. So so how do we do this? Do we get into a car accident? Or what, what do we do? Right? Not. <laughs> so, and, and, and by the way, the universe makes sure that people who are on this path re- regularly get shocked uh, and, and have trouble so that to try to wake us up, to shock us out of this pattern. Mm-hmm. And what I do recommend is we shock ourselves. Mm-hmm. I don't want to have a car accident, I shock myself. So the shock has a physiological equivalent. <sighs> it's physiology. So if I exhale quickly, uh, uh, exhale quickly, sharply, deliberately, <laughs> and chuckle <laughs> like this. Yeah. It creates a physiolo- It creates the physiological equivalent of the shock in the body. So we can be out uh, by deliberately shocking ourselves. We can be out of programming. 
-hmm. Okay, so that will last 10, 20 seconds, maybe a minute, right? Yeah. So we have, you can say, oh my God, I reached one minute of free, freed will by self, shocking myself, right? <laughs> so then of course, the next, the next question is, okay, well, what do we do with that one minute of free will? We might as well use that freed will, what we acquired for one minute and, and use it and to deliberately pay attention to a body part. Therefore, we pay attention to uh, the a universal intelligence that runs the body, right? Mm -hmm. So first shock, I use that free will temporary to, to uh, feel a body part. And feeling a body part will help staying, staying outside the jurisdiction of the mind staying outside the jurisdiction of program reality. So self-shock, and then we, we keep it by immediately focusing on the body's intelligence, and that will help us in a shocked state, which is at this moment, we can call freed will, because we freed it up. Is that, I don't know if it's clear. <laughs> yeah, it's wonderful. I, yeah, absolutely. I remember when, uh... Uh, we were working on uh, your book, um, Functional Silence. Um, you say there that we, in, in a sense, unless our will is freed with a D at the end, then we don't have free will. We are damaged, and it's the damage that does the choosing. So I, I, will, I will put the quote here for everybody to see. It really moved me very much when you said that. So, and also what, what I'm hearing from you right now is that by doing this exercise that you talked about is shocking ourselves first and then um, focusing on the body part and sustaining it for a while, what we're actually doing is allowing the manifestation to last. Because if we ma manifest from the mind, uh, mind-based manifestation doesn't last very long because the mind doesn't have sustaining power whereas the body's intelligence if we manifest from that context <laughs> okay not con from that context of the body's intelligence it is la it is lasting because it's always there yeah. it doesn't fluctuate like the mind does and it's not right. there's no damage in it so back to you so first, <laughs> first the manifestation is the freed will. Uh, that's if we, if you do self shocking, it doesn't last long. Mm -hmm. If you have a car accident, it might last half an hour. But I don't recommend that kind of. <laughs> yeah, <So>. I'll pass. <laughs> so the first manifestation is free will. Then we use that free will at our discretion to allocate it somewhere. Now, if we, if we allocate it back to the programming, then it was kind of stupid, right? Because we, we freed it up and we put it back in the programming. Okay. Freed it up, put it back in the programming, right? So there you have to have the next step is to keep that freed will. And the way we keep it is to uh, sustain attention on a body part. Yeah. And then the manifestation can come based upon what we want instead of what the programming is already doing. <laughs> yes. So m perhaps we can recap by answering this particular woman and gu guide her now step by step what she should have done in order to manifest what she really wanted. Yeah, well, uh, 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 first of all, you know, the, my message to her is that you know, that's life. The, the worst thing you can do is dump on yourself. Oh my God, I did it wrong. Uh, I didn't do the manifestation right. Now look at me, what happened to me. Ah, that, ah, that. That's the worst thing that can, you can do, right? Yeah. Now is now. And you got, yourself a, a, you got yourself a new husband with similar characteristic. So uh, my experience is that by, by shifting your own mind, into a different, uh, from shifting, shifting your mind into a whole different state. 
by using an operating system that's already available to you from the body's intelligence in the body. So if you learned how to shift away from the so-called contrast mind to an angular mind, which is a different operating system, you will have the calm, you will have the freed will, and the freed will uh, equals any manifestation you want, okay? Uh, once, once you do that, you'll be surprised that mm. the, the husband number two, which is the same as number one, <laughs> might actually shift to be a better husband. Mm. Because for a, for a bad husband, you need a bad wife. So uh, the, the two minds are now interacting and nobody's home, right? <laughs> uh, either the husband is starting or the, the, or, the, or, the, or, or, the, or the wife is starting. Either way, the two minds interacting creates the trouble. Hence, you say, oh, my husband is the same as it was, right? But if, if we change the equation totally by removing one of the mind chatters, let's remove one of them, then uh, the mind chatter is not answering another mind chatter, right? You'd be surprised that this, the husband number two might just be okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Thank you so much. I think that this will really help. And um, for anyone watching this, I will have some other videos in the description, other links to videos where Gabor actually walks you through uh, the whole process of uh, accessing and activating the intelligence of the body which will give you in turn freed will, it will free up will, so then you can manifest correctly and you can manifest something that hopefully will last longer than six months. <laughs> I, I highly recommend free will. <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank you so much, Gabor. And uh, if you enjoyed it, sign up for our uh, YouTube channel or the website that will be uh, in the description and you will get more information about future events and future videos. Thank you again. Bye-bye now. You're welcome and thank you. <laughs>